despite what you think about this and Ohio State fans aren't going to like this, it is the cold, harsh truth. You cannot, and I mean you absolutely cannot keep doing this, you are sabotaging your own program. Ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas, everybody. I'm gonna ask you guys a question. Is there a better way to end off our Christmas day than a college football video? I don't think so. Kick back, relax, get nice, warm, and cozy next to the fire, and grab you a cup of hot chocolate. I actually have a cup of hot chocolate in my hand myself. I said, and eh, why not? I'll get into the mood, and I haven't had a cup of hot chocolate in a couple of years. I hope you had a great Christmas, and are currently having a great Christmas, because it's still Christmas Day. And major shout out to the Twitter community because I tweeted out earlier today, Merry Christmas. You guys know this, it cannot, and I mean it absolutely cannot be a Christmas, and it can't be a Christmas video at that, without the legendary picture of White Randy. If you know, you know, that's all I'm gonna say. Major shout out to everybody on Twitter, and thank you for all the Merry Christmases. And one more thing about Christmas, and we're gonna walk in and get down to the football talk. I don't know if it's just me, let me know if you feel the same way, and maybe it's just because I've gotten older, but Christmas doesn't hit the same anymore. I don't know, maybe that's just me, and I'm not trying to be a Grinch, but I just don't get that same feeling I did in the early 2000s. And also, the other thing I'm gonna say before we get a move on here, let me know in the comment section, what was some of the, or THE, coolest gift you got today? If you are curious as to what I got, my mom, she just got me a couple of golfing shirts, which I greatly appreciate. But to me at least, Christmas isn't about the gifts, don't get me wrong, gifts are cool and whatnot, but I think the best part about Christmas is spending time with your family. And also, I got those in there. It ain't Christmas without these two movies. A Christmas Story and National Lampoon's Christmas. You gotta watch those. That is a tradition for me. I don't know what it is. I gotta watch A Christmas Story at least four times on Christmas Day and also National Lampoon's Christmas. All right, Matt, shut the crap up, lock in. Sorry, I do apologize for the Christmas rant. Well, actually, you know what? No, I don't apologize because it's Christmas. You shouldn't be mad about me talking about Christmas for two or three minutes. Getting that out the way, though, in today's video, we gotta talk about one big topic and it involves no other than Ohio State. And I hate to make this video on Christmas Day because I think some Ohio State fans might take it the wrong way. I hope you don't, but the bottom line is Ohio State cannot keep doing this. What am I referring to? What am I talking about? You'll see in just a second. We got a couple of minor topics to speak on, including Florida State. Yet again, they're back in the news, and we got to talk about Florida's transfer running back, Trevor Etienne. People, even on Christmas Day, are still upset with Trevor Etienne, and I get it. This video's been all over the place, but hey, it's Christmas. I don't want to make this a long video. I do want to make it short and sweet, because I'm busy, and I know you guys are busy as well. And thank you to every single one of you that is taking some time out of your Christmas day to watch this video. I greatly appreciate every single one of y'all. Our channel and more importantly our community to me at least it's just one big family i don't think me sitting up here and talking to you guys and us interacting in the comment section is any different from interacting with your family during christmas i did want to throw that out there that i really appreciate you guys but all right matt blah blah, blah. shut the crap up now that i do it Whew. man oh man that intro was all over the place it was scattered it was long it was drug out but hey it is what it is Sometimes in life, you gotta roll with the punches, and that's exactly what we're about to do. First things first, let's start with this. The breaking news came out today that Florida State's quarterback, Tate Rodemaker, remember, this was a second stringer, he's entering the portal, and he will not be playing against Georgia. Most people in the comment section, they don't agree with this, they don't like it, and I get where they're coming from. But to me, at least, I don't think it's that big of a deal, because let's be honest, whether Florida State wins or loses the game against Georgia, it doesn't matter. Florida State is in a lose-lose situation. They wanted to be in the playoffs. I get it. People wanted to see Tate Rodemaker stay, but the season's already over for Florida State. And I hate to have that standpoint of view on it because I know a lot of those guys are going to try hard against Georgia, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. And let's not act like Tate Rodemaker some big-time game changer. He is not. Him and Brock Glenn are 1A, 1B. They are both mediocre quarterbacks at best. I'll leave it at that. I didn't want to share that news with y'all, though, because it came out. And also, let me show you this. We already talked plenty about this. I'm not giving a run-through, but Trevor Etienne, Florida's former running back, he enters a portal, and you know where he winds up going? To Georgia. And I've made this astronomically clear. This is a win-win. It's a win for Trevor Etienne, and it's a win for Georgia. If you want more information about that, go watch one of the previous videos. The only problem and dilemma about all of this was Etienne was transferring to a rival school in Georgia. A lot of fans weren't happy about it, and they were hashing out on him on social media. Well, guess what? He wound up responding yesterday and said, How are you mad at me for doing better? Hashtag go dogs, though, and he deleted the tweet. Well, here's my thing, Trevor Etienne. If you're going to tweet out something like this, 
don't delete it because then you look like you deleted it because you was getting backlash. And also another reason you shouldn't delete it is because you know people are going to screenshot it. So it's never actually going to be fully deleted. You know that meme that's going around with Drewski where he's like, hey, I'm standing on business, man. That's the thing with Trevor Etienne. By you tweeting this out and deleting it, you're not standing on business. I will say this though, at least he's not going back and forth with the trolls and haters like Kirk Herbstreit. Don't even get me started on that. You know how I feel about it. I could talk about that all day long, but we gotta get to move on to the main topic of the main encore, the main reason you catch on to this video. What in the world is going on with the little bro Ohio State? Well, my friend, I'm glad you asked because we got some stuff to talk about. Let me give you a quick refresher here. For those of you that don't know, Ohio State is arguably wide receiver university. I, however, would say Alabama is wide receiver U just because of all the success their wide receivers have had in the NFL. And also another reason you could label Alabama as wide receiver university is because at one time they had four first rounders. Remember that core group Alabama had? Jerry Judy, first round pick. Jalen Waddle, first round pick. Henry Ruggs, first round pick first round pick and Devontae Smith first round pick and Heisman Trophy winner. I've also seen other people argue and say that LSU is wide receiver U and I see where they're coming from. But my point is it's either Alabama, LSU, or Ohio State. And in the past couple of years you can't deny Ohio State, whew, they've been killing it. Ohio State has been getting studs and to put it into perspective, you remember Alabama's legendary wide receiver right, Jamison Williams? The only reason he came to Alabama is because he couldn't find playing time at Ohio State because that's how good the receivers were. I want you to think about that. Jamison Williams was arguably one of the best wide receivers in the nation that one year at Alabama, and he couldn't even get playing time at Ohio State. You could chalk it up to, oh, well, he wasn't given a fair shot and a fair opportunity at Ohio State, but to me at least, it was more so of the talent ahead of him was unreal. And most recently, remember, Ohio State had Chris Olave, who was one of my favorites, and Garrett Wilson. And don't think I forgot about him, but we all know the young man that goes by the name of Marvin Harrison Jr. He's going to be a top five pick. And there's a couple other guys I could refer to, but those are the few that came to my mind first. But guess what? As a matter of fact, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me show you this first before I go on this complete rant and tangent. As to when I'm speaking and making this video, this is what Ohio State's wide receiver room is going to look like next year. Five-star Emeka Abuga, five-star Carnell Tate, five-star Brandon Ennis, five-star Jeremiah Smith, five-star Noah Rogers, and five-star Mylon Graham. Not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but six. Count them, six five-stars. Not on the roster, but in the wide receiver room. Good gosh almighty, that is ridiculous. And guess what? Oh yeah, you gotta throw in there, they're also getting four, four stars. Jaden Ballard, Kojo, Colin Grays, and Bryson Rogers. And I love me some Bryson Rogers. Well, here's my problem with all this. I stated last year, all down the season, Ohio State had the most talented team in the country. I thought they were more talented than Georgia. And yet, Ohio State last year with the most talented team, in my humble opinion, they didn't win a championship. They have nothing to show for it. And the year before that, I thought they was easily, I wouldn't say the most talented team, but they were one of the most talented teams, and yet again, nothing to show for. But a big fat loss to Michigan. These past couple of years, it is an absolute embarrassment and a shame that Ohio State and C.J. Stroud and all those great wide receivers walked away with zero, and I'm talking about zero, national championships. When you sit back and think about it, Ohio State fans, and they're going to be watching this video, you know it's ridiculous, and it's shameful. And it's not even the fact that they don't have a championship to show for it, but they haven't even played in a championship game. You haven't beat Michigan in three years. And I know the Ohio State fans are going to say, well, Matt, we almost beat Georgia, and okay, cool, but you, you didn't, okay? The bottom line is you didn't, and you didn't make the championship. And I said Ohio State didn't make a championship in three years. Well, I do apologize, because in 2020, they did make the championship, but... <laughs> We saw what happened. Alabama just beat the brakes off of them. But getting back to my point here and the whole main reason I'm making this video, let's go back to this. We could sit up here for the next 20 minutes and talk about how disappointing this Ohio State team has been the past couple of years, but we can't change it. So let's talk about the future. And in the future, Ron Day has yet another opportunity with an outstanding wide receiver room. Although I think Ron Day should have been fired, and don't get me started on that, that's a different conversation for a different day, he cannot, and I mean he absolutely cannot keep doing this. Ohio State has got to learn to play great offense and, and this is hard, Ohio State has got to learn to play great offense and great defense. The past couple of years, what has it been? Oh, it's been a great offense, but not a great defense. This year, you could argue and say that their defense was better than their offense. Ohio State hasn't been able to string it together, but i tell you this much. With all these studs coming in and the fan base knows they're coming in, they're expecting a championship relatively soon. And you guys know this, I am not an Ohio State fan, but I'm sick and tired of seeing these outstanding wide receivers get their career wasted and they're not even winning championships. They gotta start winning championships soon. 
And here's why you got to win a championship soon, because the more talent you continue to waste, the more these future four- and five-star recruits are going to look at them and go, you know what? I've seen other five-star wide receivers go there, and they have nothing to show for it, so why would I go there and waste my talent as well? Despite what you think about this, and Ohio State fans aren't going to like this, it is the cold, harsh truth. You cannot, and I mean you absolutely cannot keep doing this, you are sabotaging your own program. It's one thing to not be winning championships when you have three-star wide receivers. It's another thing to not be winning championships when you have five-star wide receivers every single year. And I cannot emphasize that enough. I'm curious. Let me know your thoughts down below. But... Uh,